there's a, a bit of, um, I'm interested in, in A, tell me about that process change and tell me that none of these related to it. Um, I'm not sure that the process has, has changed. We definitely have in-house animal control um, and um, licensing and compliance have, have uh, made a decision to do that for various reasons. But the actual process of the contact centres, there were slightly different um, processes around the region, but generally contact centres answer those calls first. Um, and my understanding, um, recently we've made some changes where uh, we do, for priority ones, we we put them directly through to animal So you're assuring me that those urgent calls are put through, so it's not as a result of the change? No, right. no, no. Yeah. So when uh, dog owners now call the council, they're finding that the call centre answers and that, that, and that somebody from animal control will respond within 24 hours, will we'll call them back. That's completely different. I think we should tell people that. Right, OK. Because I'm getting people annoyed that they can't speak to animal control. I suppose that the, the slight difference, sorry, through the chair, the, the difference here is that they were talk they may have thought they were talking to animal control because they were called animal control but they were still a contact center <laughs> within that organization so they they were actually a contact That's center right. we've just but it was shifted the, 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 the call was transferred to, to, to another person not the, not the first person that answered the phone so it's changed not perception has changed perception has yep. changed yes but um, there was always somebody taking the call first the, um, and they just happen to be called Animal Control as an organisation. Um, we're now taking the calls and we're putting it through to, if it's a P1, uh, Priority 1. And if it's not? If it's, if it's not, we're handling it as, as, we, as it always has been handled. Um, yes. So it, that was a formal complaint I received, so just letting you know that that needs to be communicated better to the public yes. when systems and change. And I'm not sure whether um, I'm answering the specific that you um, raised earlier around the hour to respond. Um, I know my team are actually obviously involved in that, but they don't do the response. But um, one of the challenges that I know we, we do have is sometimes in regions um, like Rodney and Franklin, it takes us two hours to get from one side to the other in those areas. So a one hour response is impossible from that respect. So there are some of those challenges that are there. But you know, if you do have any instances like that, we definitely want to hear about them because I think I'm interested be. always when there is a less than 100% response that I get specific information about why. Yes. Yeah. And if it's because it was in Rodney, that's fine. If it was something else. Right. And my last one, I'm really, really, really concerned about a sentence in this report. This is now in in the quarterly report, it's near the end, and it's about contractors. I'm looking at page 151, it's complaints. And we're looking at the volume of complaints received by council in the last quarter. And the sentence reads, complaints relating to contractor behavior are consistently high when compared to the overall totals received. Now that really concerns me, and what, we're do, what, we're, you know, what are we doing about that? What, 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 who, who, who's working on that? Um. <laughs> I'd have to say we all should be, and we all are working on that. So the, these reports go back to the, um, my business colleagues to, to let them know that the response hasn't, has been less than satisfactory. So, but it's not just one area in specific. That's, that's an average over the overall, but um, it, it, it could be in some instance one, one contractor or an element of issues where um, you may, instances where we had last year where we had um, trucks break, d broken down, those kinds of things, and it affects a large number of people. So the large number of complaints that um, do eventuate, eventuate from that are there, come across our desk. So, um, but we, yes, we feed that, back, that information back to our colleagues so that they can address those issues with performance of contractors. It says these include contractor driving and damage to property. I think what I'd like is to keep an eye on that particular bit of the complaints. You know, how, how many do we get every month and, and how we can trend that down? And I don't know what you have to do to trend it down. Do, do, who, that's what I'm saying. Where, where does that start? Is it we when go we, we go back to the contracts? We go back to the business and they address it through the contract manager, the person who manages the relationship with, with the contractor themselves. Thank you. Okay, Councillor Wood. Oh, thank you. Um, I've just got a couple of questions. Firstly, um, when people ring up the service, ring Auckland Council, um, <coughs> um, and then you get put through to, um, we, we go, go to the uh, operator, 
um, and then you get told that it's a um, uh, Auckland transport issue. But then it may be um, an Auckland transport issue which Parks Department deal with, such as mowing grass or that kind of activity. So, um, and it gets very confusing as to who's, if, if for elected people it gets confusing, so for, for the public it must be even more confusing. So are we doing anything to try and um, iron out some of those anomalies or those kind of funny little ways we do things? Um, we are, I'm sorry, through the chair. We, we are doing um, quite a bit with Auckland Transport. We, we manage Auckland Transport's contact centre on their behalf. Um, we manage that as a shared service. Oh. So if you ring Auckland Council um, today, uh, 3010101, yeah. or the council, um, sorry, the Auckland Transport number, you come through to the same people. What happens in 3010101 is that the uh, voice message up front will ask you, if your call is about Auckland Transport, if it is, you press one and go straight through to the team that specialise in that area. But what we've also done with the wider um, council team is train them in, in transport as well. So we, we basically first call, get them to the person who looks after Auckland Transport, but if they're all busy, then anyone else in the council team can, can handle those calls. So we'll, we work right across the, the business on that. Okay, well... I just want to ask about the time it takes to get some of those matters kind of action. Because you get a reply saying, oh, you're, if you send an email, it'll be attended to within three days, I think it is. And then you may get another one from Auckland Council, Auckland Transport, saying it'll be attended to within seven days. Yep. So about, you know, I can give you emails where they've been going around the mulberry bush mm. for, for a week or more. And... And, and then some of them, I don't actually get a reply until you forget all about it, and then yeah, you get a reply. Three weeks later, and they say, oh, yeah, we've, att we've received your email. And you think, well, I put that in three weeks ago, or two weeks ago, mm -hmm. anyway. Mm -hmm. And um, so, I, I mean, I, I think it's, the, it's an efficient way to do it because you've got a record of it, but it seems that... Um, and then a long time later, you get a reply saying, oh, we've actually attended to that job. So... It, if, if that's how the pub, if we get get the uh, the action, no wonder the public kind of think, well, what's going on here? Because they they kind of think back to what it was like in the legacy councils, um, when they could bring up the councillor or somebody and they'd get things done reasonably quickly. But it seems that the system that we've got at the moment is a very, what well, I would say, laborious kind of bureaucratic kind of approach. I mean, I don't think other councillors would have to agree with that. And that's the way I see it as a councillor. Now, you may think, well, it's got to be done like that because we get such volumes, and that may be the case. But um, if you, if you, um, it just seems that there's a lot of messages that go through to get something done. Both the statement or. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> is there any way we could short circuit the system or, or break it down or. <coughs> so it's, or I, I think my best answer through the chair is that we are constantly working on that. Some, I mean, one of the challenges is that we are two different organisations and we do operate different systems. One of the advantages we have of having the contact centre team as one is that it's the same process. Um, when we move to emails and some of the other processes within Auckland Transport, they are different. And I suppose it is on me to, to work with my colleagues in Auckland Transport to, to try and align those those processes to ensure that we've, uh, we're have giving consistent service. So it is something I will take we'll take up with them, uh, particularly on the email side of things. But yeah. as far as the processes go and, and logging things, if you, whichever number you ring, if you log it, it's we, we log it into the system and it gets actioned to, no matter which location you go to first. So, okay, I just asked another question in relation to you know, infrastructure on the um, side of the road owned by the different um, um, utility op operators and um, AdShell. Now, I can't understand how the um, average Joe Blow citizen could actually differentiate between an AdShell bus shelter and a North Shore or, or an Auckland Council bus shelter. But, you know, they, they, kind, of, um, they kind of say, oh, look, that's AdShell. Um, call this number. Well, why should the community people who are taking the time to contact the council 
have to then get a message back and say, contact Adshell. They're, they're the people to do it. <laughs> so it's, it's when it's on, on council property and it's in the best interest to get it cleaned up. Mm. So I just put that to you. And, and the same with Vector and, and these other um, infrastructure owners. If it's, not a, if it's not a telecom or chorus um, box, they say, oh, it's, it's clear or some other organisation. So can we get that sorted out so that, you know, it doesn't have to be the, the caller who has to make that call? I, um, I am surprised that there has been your experience. I well, it I, is. It yeah, is. I know. I, it, it surprises me. In the instance of Adshell, I'm not sure what the, uh, that specific example, but I know having seen some of the procedures, my team should be taking that call and forwarding it on to, Ad, uh, to uh, Vector. On, on our on their behalf because we like to to ensure we have a relationship with Victor where we can directly um, okay. log those so I will follow that up that it, my understanding is that's not the correct procedure but I, I will look into the ad shell one as well because we do I mean 10% uh, of our calls uh, that we receive or actually interactions that we receive in council are not about council business yeah. and rather than <coughs> um, pushing people away we have tried over the years to uh, find a channel for those customers to be referred. Um, so I'm not 100% sure about AdShell. I'm surprised because we have such a close relationship with them. Um, but I know in Vector, we do Maybe the, maybe we do the individual operator who kind of... It, it could be, them. and we should, we should look at that. But okay. um, it's the same with police. We often get issues that are not related to council. They're actually police issues. We don't, uh, unless it's a 111 kind of emergency where we refer people to, we would... Um, take those calls and, and, and pass them over, and we do. And the, the police do that with us as well. We have direct contact with them. Yeah. Uh, okay. Well, just another question I've got is in relation to shuttles. What what's um, I, I I see a you know on the, like in the North Shore there's a there's a timetable up at the lift saying shuttles will run every this is a, like a bus timetable. Mm -hmm. I, I just wonder why are we running shuttles from the North Shore to the, to the Auckland City Centre when we have buses running, you know, every 10 minutes or something like that? I can't, I, I, sorry, I no, can't answer that. No, I'm not asking, well, I'm just I'm posing some, the question. Some Kevin. Oh, you're looking at, yeah, yeah, through the chair, yeah, there is, the, there is the public system. There's also the shuttle systems worked out. It was quite an efficient way of doing it because it's actually from door to door. Um, it's actually for people that are coming to meetings, it means you're pretty well getting in, and if, for instance, your case, Takapuna office, straight to the city here, at the back of Bledisloe, straight to a meeting, straight back. All the buses. Um, <coughs> and it reduced any use of any of the um, private cars being used, trying to find parking situations um, or, any, or any other methodology. It was actually a very cost-effective way of running it. Yeah, but um, well, I, know, I, know, I know you have to pay to get the bus. But um, the buses run from central Takapuna to just <coughs> behind the Bledisloe, the same place as the shuttle is, uh, is located. Yep. What, and I, you know, what? we're trying to, it's the same with Auckland Transport running shuttles. We're trying to promote public transport, and here we have, um, you know, the council running shuttles. Yeah. So it's just a. It's just something which I, I find a bit in, uh, unusual, but um, I'm, you know. Yep. Okay, thank you. Councillor Stewart. Thank you. I think actually a lot of it's been covered. Um, but one, one thing I just, with the call centre, um, with the trends in the different wards, um, do you have a break, breakdown of what seems to be trending more? Just for example, at the moment I, I seem to get every second or third day I get people ringing up about fireworks being lit and, um, yeah. 